In this video, I'm going to solve three practice problems on recursion. Now, if you don't know what recursion is, please check out my video on the basics of recursion first and then come back for practice. The problems that I'm going to solve are recursive array sum, recursive linear search, and recursive binary search. So let's start with the first problem. So let's say I have an array with a number of elements. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I want to add up these elements recursively. Now, normally I would not be doing this recursively. An iterative solution where I have a loop and a running sum that adds up all these elements would be more elegant and even more efficient. But this is just practice. Now, one way I could go about this is that I define the array sum as being the adding the first element to the array sum of this segment of the array. So array sum is something plus array sum. That is a recursive definition. So that would be adding the elements, let's say from index 0 all the way to index n. In this case, it would be 5. This is going to be the first element, which is 1, plus adding the elements from index 1 all the way to n. So add is something plus add. So that's a recursive definition. A general formula would be adding a segment that starts from index i and goes all the way to index n. That will be the first element of the segment array of i, and I'm assuming that this array is called ARR array, plus adding the elements starting from the next element, that is i plus 1, all the way to n. So this is the recursive case. Recursive case. Now I need a way to stop. So I need a base case. The base case is a case where the solution is just trivial and I don't need to recurse anymore. So I could stop when i is equals to n. When i is equal to n, that means I have one element. So I could return that element and, and that would be the sum of this array. Or I could just say when i exceeds n, that means I have an empty array. So when i is greater than n, the array is empty and the sum of the array would be zero. So I could just go ahead and return zero. So that's a base case. So I have a recursive case and I have a base case. I can just go ahead and, and start coding up the solution. So let's just do that. Now, I'm assuming that the array is an integer array. So the sum of an integer array is going to be integer. That's why the return type is going to be integer. I'm going to call it array sum. I'm going to be passing the array to this function, the starting index, and the end index. So first, I'm going to do the base case. So f, the start index, has become greater than the end index. That means my array is empty. In this case, I know the answer. I do not need to, to do any more recursion. So the answer is return 0. Otherwise, uh, per the recursive formula, the sum would be the first element plus adding from the next element all the way to the end. So that will be the first element. So that's what I'm going to be returning. The first element would be array of start plus array sum of array starting from start plus one now because I want to uh, add the remaining part of the array all the way to the end. So that's the recursive solution to the array sum problem. Now let's just go ahead and uh, write an example array here. Um, let's just do one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's just print the result. So std column column c out uh, array sum. And for the first call, we're going to be passing the array and we want to add the entire array. So we're going to start from index 0 all the way to index 5 because I have 
six elements, it's going to end up at index five because arrays start from zero. So, and then let me just do an end line here. So the sum of this array is supposed to be three, six, 10, 15, 21. So this is going to be 21. So let's just go ahead and compile it. It's called array sum.cpp dash o array sum. And let's just run this. And as you can see, the result is 21. Now let's move on to the next problem. Now the next problem is recursive linear search. Now let's say I have the same array, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the problem that I'm trying to solve now is searching within this array for a given element, a given key. Now, if I find the key, I'm going to return the location of that key, which is basically the index. If not, I'm going to return negative one. So searching for four would return three because four is located at index three. So zero, one, two, three. Searching for 10 would return negative one because 10 is not within this array. Now, I wouldn't normally be solving this problem recursively. An iterative solution would be more readable and even more efficient. But for the purpose of practice, let's find a recursive solution for this problem. Now, finding a recursive solution to this problem basically means that linear search need to be defined in terms of linear search. So one way to go about this is to check whether the first element is the key that you're looking for. If it is the key that you're looking for, you're done. You don't need to do any more recursion. So that's a base case. You can just go ahead and return the index of the first element. Um, if not, then you search for the uh, key that you're looking for in the remaining part of the array. So search is something plus search. So that's a recursive definition. Obviously, you need to stop if the array is empty. And just like we did with the previous example, uh, the uh, array uh, is empty if the starting index exceeds the uh, ending index. So there you go. I found um, a, a base case where I found the element, a base case where the array is empty, and then a recursive case where I search for the remaining part of the array. So let's just go ahead and code this up. So my function is supposed to return an index and the index is just an integer. So I'm going to return an integer. I'm going to call the function linear search. And the function is supposed to take the array. It's supposed also to take the key um, and a starting index and an ending index. Now, if the starting index is greater than the ending index, that means that the array is empty. So if the array is empty, I don't need to make any more recursive calls. That said, I just return that uh, the index being negative one because I can't find a key within an empty array. Now, otherwise, if the uh, uh, key is equal to the array of star, that means the first element in this current slice of the array, then I just return start because I just found the key. Once more, I don't need to do any recursion. Now, if the array is not empty and the key is not the first element of this segment of the array that I'm searching within at this point, then let me search uh, for the key within the remaining part of the array. So the result of my search would be whatever that comes out from linear search within my array for the key starting from start plus one, so the remaining part, all the way to the end. So this is the uh, recursive definition of linear search. Now let's just go ahead and test this Let's define an array um, with elements one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's do one search for an element that exists. So, and let's print that out. So we'll do linear search within array for the element, let's say four. 
starting from zero all the way to the end, which is five. Because we want to on the on this search, we want to do the we want to search within the entire array. And let's just do a new line here. And let's do another search where we're looking for an element that doesn't exist. So let's search for 10 here. So the first one is supposed to return three because four sits at index three. And the second one is supposed to return negative one. So let's just go ahead and try that. Linear search dot CPP dash O linear search. And then let's run this code. And indeed, we get three and negative one. Now, the third example problem on recursion is binary search. And for binary search to work, the input array needs to be sorted. And the input array that we used for the other problems in this video is already sorted. So we can use it for this uh, problem as well. So let's just use the same array. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And let's say we're looking for five. Now, the idea with binary search is that we can take advantage of the fact that the uh, array is sorted and avoid having to check the elements of the array one by one. What we could do instead is that we could hit the middle of the array right away. So the element at the middle of the array here is three. Now we're looking for five. Since the array is sorted, five cannot be in this part of the array. If it exists, five should be in this part of the array. So what we do now is that we ignore this entire half of the array and focus on the uh, on this half. So we hit the middle of this segment of the array and repeat the same process. But now five is actually the element at the middle of the array. So we just found the element, we returned the index. Now let's take another example where uh, the element that we're looking for does not exist in the array. So let's say we're looking for 10. So the same process, we hit the middle of the array. If 10 exists, it has to be on the right hand side. So we have this array one more time. So if 10 exists, then it has to be on the right hand side. So we have this array once more, but there's only one element. So this is the half. So if it exists, then it has to be on the right hand side. But now the right hand side is an empty array. So um, in an empty array, uh, the element 10 does not exist. So we just return negative one to indicate that the element doesn't exist. So we basically maintain the uh, start and end, or if you will, the low and, and high index. And as soon as the low index uh, exceeds the high index, uh, then the array is empty, just like we did for the other examples. Now the base cases here are either the array is empty. If the array is empty, we just return negative one, or I should say the slice of the array or the segment of the array that we're working on right now is empty. At that point, we just go ahead and return negative one. That's a base case. We don't need to do any more recursion. Or we found the element that we're looking for. And that's again, another base case. Uh, we just return that index and we're done. Um, uh, or we hit the recursive case, which includes um, deciding whether we should go to the left or to the right based on the value of the element in the middle. And we basically do recursion. So let's just go ahead and code up this example. Now my function is supposed to return an index and the index is just an integer, so I'm going to return an integer. And I'm going to call the function binary search. And this function is going to accept the array that we're looking uh, for the key within. And then the key, and then the low index, and then the high index. Now, um, Let's first check to see if the segment of the array that we're working uh, with then is empty. And that happens when low exceeds high. So if low is greater than high, then we know that we hit a base case where the element is not found and therefore we return negative one. Now, if it's not empty, then we need to find the middle element. So let's find the index for the middle element. 
So this is going to be med equals uh, uh, low plus high divided by two. Now you may find this written uh, a slightly different uh, somewhere else to avoid the, or the potential problem of um, integer overflow. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to keep it this way. And uh, this is an integer division. So uh, the fractional part is going to be truncated. And that's important because we're using this as an index. We cannot use a non-integer for as an index uh, for an array. So now we found the index for the middle element. Let's check uh, if the element at the middle of the array is equal to the key. Now if it is equal to the key, then I just found what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to return the med, which is the index of the key in this case. And that's again a base case. Now, if the array is not empty and the element in the middle is not what I'm looking for, then I need to decide whether I should be looking to the right or to the left. So if the key is smaller than the element in the middle, then what does that mean? It's smaller than the element in the middle, so I should be looking to the left, right? So if the element exists, it's going to be in the left. So we're going to return whatever comes from uh, binary searching the left-hand side of the array. So we're going to be passing the array, the key, and starting from low all the way to med minus one because we've checked all the way to med now. So we're going to be checking uh, from low to med minus one. That is the left side of the array. Now, otherwise, if key is not smaller than the element of the med, then it has to be greater. So because it's not equal and it's not smaller, it has to be greater. So we return whatever comes from binary searching the right hand side. So we're going to pass the array, the key, and uh, low becomes mid minus one, uh, actually mid plus one. So we're searching from mid plus one all the way to high. So this is the uh, binary search function. And um, as you can see, I'm not using if else because I'm using return. So alternatively, I could just uh, use if else if you find this a bit more readable. So um, let's just go ahead and write an example array and test this function. So let's initialize this array with one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, once again, make a call to this function with this array. Let's look for five. And for the initial call, we're going to be searching from index zero all the way to index five. So the last index is five. So let's have a, um, a new line here. And let's make another search for an element that doesn't exist. So Particularly, let's do that for uh, 10. So let's just go ahead and compile this. Dash O, binary search. And then let's run this code, binary search. And as you can see, five uh, is at index number four, so zero, one, two, three, four, so that's correct. And 10 does not exist in this array, so it returns a negative one. So these are three example problems on uh, uh, recursion. Now, once you start tackling problems uh, that has to do with uh, tree data structures or graphs, you're going to be seeing a lot more of these recursion uh, functions because they're a lot more elegant for these types of problems. So that's it for recursion, and I'll see you in the next video.